We are live now, sir. Hario. Hario. <laughs> Prostrating at the lotus feet of Brahmanishta, Shrotriya Sadguru, Swami Virajeshwara Saraswati, on behalf of all of us, today's discourse on Viveka Chudamani will continue with the Mangala Charana Shlokas. <clears throat> Om Shri Ganesha Yanama, Om Shri Mahasarswat Yainama, Sada Shiva Samaram Bham, Sri Shankara Charya Madhyamam, Maswada Charya Pariyantam, One Day Guru Param Param. Shruti Smuti Purana Malayam Karunalayam, Namami Bhagavat Padam Shankaram Loka Shankaram. Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutravashakrata Vande Bhagavanta Punapunaha Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta Gocharam Tamagocharam Govindam Paramanandam Sadgurum Radosmiham Om Namo Bhagavate Virajeshvaraya Hari Om Last time the verse or the shloka number up to 149 in Viveka Chudamani was covered repeatedly as I often make it a point to remind all of us that the, this explanation on Viveka Chudamani is mainly based on the commentary Ashya given by Sri Sri Chandrasekhar Bharti Mahaswamigal of Sri Shingeri Sharadam Naya, Sharada Peetam, Dakshanam Naya, Sharada Peetam. So from today, 150th Shloka onwards, we are commencing. Here and there, there might be explanation in my vernacular language, Kannada. Again, I have to repeat this for the sake of some of the people who may not fully understand the English uh, discourse. Last time, Acharya, while explaining again the same basic core point of Atma Nirupana, he was taking an example of the pond covered by the lichens or the green algal material, so that the water in the pond is not immediately visible. In the same way, the self-shining self, Atman, Pratyagatma, Atma, or the self, or the God, as we call Ishwara, though residing inside our body, since it's all completely covered by different layers of ajnana, ignorance. So the God inside, though it's self-sufficient, self-radiating, all in all, sarvajna, not visible. So we are identifying ourselves falsely that I am this body only. Repeatedly, there is a core point in the Advaita Vedanta prakriya. Our basic fault is, I am identifying that I am the body. Body here means the mind also. Mind means it also includes ego, ahankara, chitta and buddhi, intellect. So the antakkarana plus the physical body, you know what we commonly call body-mind complex. Body-mind complex. I am this. I am this body, this mind, this personality. I am this individual. I have this particular status. So this is the ignorance. This is the ever-recurring ignorance, Ajnana, also called Mula Avidya. Continue. So he has taken up the example of a pond last in the last. Water is there but it is not visible because it is covered. So now he continues, 
Now he continues with the same example. Tachaivalapanaye samyak salilam pratiyate shuddham krishna santapaharam sadhyaha saukhya pradam param pumsaha. Tachaivalapanaye samyak salilam pratiyate shuddham krishna santapaharam sadhyaha saukhya pradam param pumsaha. Now what here he says, the Acharya telling the disciple, look, my dear Shishya, tat shaivala apanaye means if you remove the surface, green, thick green algal material, if you just remove that from the surface water, what happens? The clear water is inside, visible, it becomes visible. So that Krishna Santapaharam Satya, Saukhya Pradam Param Pumsaha. So when you are thirsty, the water is there only. Only thing you have to remove the upper layer of the algal material and the clear water is there inside. So you can drink it. Koladalli, Pachi Katirva, Kodasatra Hodaga, Mele Rtakanta Pachi in the Sursi the Reg, Volagade Niri De Riella, Adunamege Kudiliki Agatalva Pachi Rodrina near Karnatai, Aki Pachi in the Sursi the Renir Karnat Kudil Yogiva, the Shudwa, the Nir Sigatia, Kodasali. That is a point. He is giving that example. Remove, remove this green scum the water becomes visible so that you can quench your thirst. Krishna Santapaharam Santahap Santapaharam Krishna See, you are ever increasing thirst. Krishna means thirst. Literal sense. In Vedantic sense, Krishna means your unsatiable desires. Unsatiable desires, your wants, which can never be fulfilled in life. If one desire is fulfilled, another one will come up. There is no end. Our Guru used to always use the used to use the word phrase, never-ending story. Desires, you know, clock like the waves of the ocean, which you observe standing on the beach. One after the other, the waves continually move and move and lash to the beach area. Will it stop? One wave comes in, followed by another wave, another wave like that. So, Krishna means the thirst, the hunger of the desire, desire to fulfill your basic expectations, your wants. So, in this example, Vedanta gives another two examples. Same point. Acharya elsewhere has said that. On the afternoon sky, when the sun is blazing, suddenly the sun is not visible because the entire horizon is covered by thick clouds. When the clouds cover the horizon of the sky, sun becomes invisible. All that is required is to wait when the clouds vanish, when they move out, the sunlight is visible. That is one example. Another example in the Vedanta, very most pertinent example. The mirror is there unused for so many months or years in the house. So that the upper surface, which reflects your image, Completely covered by dust, thick dust, let us say. A thick dust. So when you look at the mirror, you want to see your face. Your face may not be visible because of the dust, thick layer of dust on the mirror. So if you start shouting that the mirror is there, I am not visible, and my reflection is not visible. A wise man comes and says, clean the mirror. Clean it properly. So when you clean the mirror properly, 
your face is visible in the mirror so the reflection is already there but it is you are not seeing it because of the dust thick dust covered on the mirror so these are the examples in vedas given now he continues acharya continues <coughs> पंचाशापवादे विभाय शुद्ध निनंदक प्रत्यक्ष परम स्वयं ज्योति पंचाशापवादे विभाय शुद्ध निनंदक प्रत्यक्ष परम स्वयं ज्योति पंचा कोशानापवादे कोश तेदाकदे वेले वो आग वेरतक निशुद्ध भक्त बुद्धन परम चैतन्य स्वरूपन नि्य आनंद रसरूपन आत्मन दर्शन आगते कोश तेद्रे आत्मन दर्शन आगते हेबिट्राचार्य So, if you remove the five sheaths, pancha naam api kosha naam, pancha kosha. If you remove one by one, remove means if you dissolve, dissect, and give up ultimately, not identifying with that it means. So, if you remove one by one the five typical koshas in the individual body, then what happens? अय शुद्ध निनंदक प्रत्यक्ष परम स्वयं ज्योति विभाति सो दी दिस परंज्योति स्वरूप द सुप्रीम कॉन्शियने दि परम चैतन्य दट विच इज आलवेज नथिंग बट आनंद स्वरूप एटर्नल आनंद स्वरूप निनंदस निनंदक सच आत्मा such pratyagatma such self becomes clearly visible atma darshana happens automatically when when you remove the five koshas five koshas sir as it was told earlier the annamaya kosha then the pranamaya kosha inside the annamaya kosha pervading the whole body then manomaya kosha that is the main ment mind the subtlest most powerful part of the antakarana the mind which includes chitta also manomaya kosha then vijnanamaya kosha that is your real intellect buddhi which has the power to discriminate that buddhi that is vijnanamaya kosha then Ultimately, Ananda Maya Kosha. Ananda Maya Kosha is due to Ajnana, due to Tamas. You always feel it during your deep sleep. So that Ananda Maya Kosha, which is temporary, not a permanent Ananda, it is similar to real Ananda, but not real Ananda at all. So these five sheets, when you discard one by one, one by one, thinking, making sure by our viveka. by our self inquiry by reflection by manana by constant manana by following the advice of the satguru by doing intensive sadhana with a determined effort when you discard one by one then ultimate atma darshana the god residing inside our own body the god residing in our heart cave becomes totally visible that means you will you will know your reality ultimately you will know that i am that ishwara itself i am that atma itself you will know i am that paramatma itself i am that brahma vastu itself that again and again vedanta says upanishad say the bhashya given by acharya shankara bhagavat pada repeatedly say 
it is not intellectual perception it is not intellectual understand by simply saying yes i know i am brahman you will never realize yourself by simply telling others who over a mic in lectures look aham brahmasmi i am that i am really that atma by saying like that you will never know atma that happens by our shraddha conviction constant meditation constant sadhana and by giving up all the paraphernalia the ego factor the mind everything all associated with the mind the feelings of raga passion lust giving up raga giving up moha giving up attachment one by one giving up krodha anger then the dvesha hatredness see until i give up raga and dvesha this realization will not happen by itself because it happens by the grace of god himself who is nothing but atma who is not nothing but brahma padartha who is nothing but the pratyagatma inside me so ultimately body consciousness is lost the ego is lost ahankara is lost then you will come to a condition a state that you are absolutely nobody you are a big zero whatever is there that is nothing but brahma padartha the same atma the same ishvara the same god who is inside is pervading outside in the entire form of the creation he himself is responsible for the creation he himself appears in the varied forms of animate and inanimate things and the universe stars and everything the planets everything so uh, the whole manifestation the whole creation is nothing but ultimately brahma padartha appearing in different ways due to its own maya shakti or mola prakruti so this is a perception called direct experience direct anubhava direct that is in vedanta it is called aparoksha anubhuti aparoksha means direct not indirect indirect means by reading the book by listening to the lecture for example i am telling you look you are not the person who you think you are you are not the male individual or a female individual you are not a man or a woman you are not a sanyasi or a brahmachari you are not a big officer you are not a ias officer you are not a billionaire multi millionaire you are not a poor fellow you are beyond that you are the pure atma swarup if i say like that you will nod your head yes yes this person sitting in front of me is telling so i must be that that's all if i say you just believe it and nod your head like this do you mean to say you become realized no that happens by the grace of guru or the sat guru or the god himself or by the grace of atma at a particular time it happens by itself it happens without your knowledge provided you follow all these instructions correct when the heart becomes totally pure purer and purer and purer in vedanta it is called chitta shuddhi acharya number of times has said so it is also called in the modern language inner transformation so many beautiful words are used nowadays to convey the meaning to the audience in the english language so many books are there so the inner transformation until it happens it may happen today it may happen tomorrow it may happen after one year or 10 years it may happen after 20 years it may happen at the time of your death it may not even happen in this birth at all it may happen in the next birth so what is that we have to remember 
we have to simply surrender our ego and everything to god himself total surrender means leave it to him he knows what to give when to give only he knows when to bless when to show his real self when when to turn you to the reality when to remove all your ignorance only he knows so there is a point here that is why vedanta is very tough people to say all mahatmans watch for that vedanta is not for all spiritual journey is not for all it is a very tough journey it is a journey full of ups and downs full of obstacles and problems the road is not clear full of thorns the maya will prevent you the mula prakriti will prevent you to reach to, towards god that is the point so the, the, the journey of this pilgrimage towards perfection is so difficult so horrible that is why in kathopanishad there is one beautiful mantra that mantra first part was used by swami vivekananda in early 1890s to propagate to inculcate sanatana dharma to show to the world importance of hindu dharma he used to always tell only the first part of the kathopanishad you must have heard you might have heard the famous quote they call, people think that it is a quote by swami vivekananda it is not his quote swami vivekananda has taken it from kathopanishad what it what he said simply uttishtatah jagratah prapya varanni bodata the famous quote by vivekananda books will write there are number of such books swami vivekananda said this uttishtatah jagratah prapya varanni bodata an english translation you might have heard in some books it means arise and away stop not till you reach the goal uttishtatah jagratah prapya varanni bodata arise and away stop not till you reach the goal now coming to the same kathopanishad on this point of vedanta how spiritual journey is so difficult let me give you the complete that particular mantra itself it says in kathopanishad it says uttishtatah jagrata prapya varan nibhotata shurasya dhara nishita duratyaya next line next part shurasya dhara nishita duratyaya durgam patastat kavayo vadanti durgam patastat kavayo vadan it means you get up open your eyes arise awake yourself get up don't stop jagrata means you understand your basic primary purpose of the life jagrata varan prapya nibodata varan prapya is the key word in the kathopanishad varan means a realized master varan means a realized brahmajnani varan means the sadguru himself who is a atmajnana sampanna approach a sadguru fall at his feet surrender yourself nibodata prapya varan after obtaining such a sadguru by your purva janma punya bala he will impart the jnana to you then you understand what jnana means because of his grace because shurasya dhara nishita duratyaya this this path of spirituality is so horrible so difficult it is as if you are walking on the 
fine tuned sharpened edge of a sword balancing your feet on the edge of the sword if you are walking slight mistake will cut your feet slight mistake so the journey in vedanta spiritual field is not that easy finding a guru itself is not easy following his instruction is not easy reflection manana itself is not easy it requires your determination it requires guru krupa it requires god's grace then it requires fully challenging mind yes i will do it you involve yourself immerse yourself in meditation or sadhana or japa whatever it is whatever the guru has said whatever the way he has said simply follow it by surrendering surrendering total surrendering that is why it's called kshurasya dara nishita duratyaya it is difficult for all cannot so difficult walking on the edge of a sword is not possible for all kshurasya dara nishita duratyaya durgam patastat kavayo vadanti kavayo plural kavi poet poets it is not that poetry poets in vedanta kavi also means a jnani param jnani a realized master a sage a sant mahapurusha param purushottama kavi means all these words kavayo vadanti realized people say masters say vadanti say that durgam pata duratyaya this path of the spiritual journey is so difficult it is not meant for all it is not easy for all only when the guru krupa you know captures you when the guru guru krupa designs in our mind then everything becomes very clear everything becomes easy because he is there to take he is there to take care only thing i have to surrender myself at his feet complete when you give up your responsibility shift your responsibility to him provided your desires are almost zero you have no desires you have no desires in life you, you have absolutely no wants in life that is what is what it means by surrender you want to have all the desires and planning of fulfilling those desires and yet you want to have brahma jnana the two cannot go together very simple if you have a lot of sankalpa in your mind i want to do this i want to do that i want to bring i want to go there i want to oh, i want i want i want sankalpa nothing will happen <laughs> so a digression was there here so that is what acharya means here so he says the basic next next lok acharya says atman atma vivekah kartavyo bandha mukta ye vidusha tenai vanandi bhavati swam vijnaya satchidanandam atman atma vivekah kartavyo bandha mukta ye vidusha तेनवानंदी स्वय सच्चिदानंद सो इन दि श्लोक आचार्य इज मेकिंग वेरी क्लियर याद आत्म याद अनात्म इवेचने सर तर्कद बुद्धिया गुरकृपया सर आ रीति विवेक दिंद ತನ್ನ ಆತ್ಮವನ್ನ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪನಾದ ಆತ್ಮವನ್ನ ಆ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಹೊಂದುತ್ತಾನೆ ಸೊ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಸ್ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈ ಸ್ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ತೇನೈವಾನಂದಿ ಭವತಿ ಸ್ವಂ ವಿಜ್ಞಾಯ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದಂ 
स्वम सच्चिदानंदम विज्ञाया तेने इवा आनंदी भवति की वर्ड सेकंड लाइन सो ओनली आफ्टर रियलाइजिंग इस ट्रू आइडेंटिटी दैट आई एम द आत्मा स्वरूप आई एम नॉट द बॉडी ओनली आफ्टर रियल आइडेंटिफिकेशन द डायरेक्ट परसेप्शन द डायरेक्ट एक्सपीरियंस दैट आई एम दिस आत्मा स्वरूप आई एम नॉट द बॉडी दिस आत्मा स्वरूप neither i have birth nor there is a death neither i am born nor i am going to die what is born and what will die is this body along with the mind complex this body along with the mind complex is born and this body along with the mind complex will die but i really in the reality i am neither born nor i am going to die neither there is a birth to me nor there is a death to me see this is the ultimate reality to be experienced aparoksha anubhuti again and again the same point in veda acharya is telling that so the one vidusha the wise man knowledgeable man the man who is after realizing his real purpose in life parama purushartha the one who wants to know really who i am see so he is called vidusha here for him bandha mukte in order to get away from the bondage of samsara atmanatma viveka kartavya acharya is making very clear here so for anybody who wants to escape this samsara you have to understand perceive totally without an iota of doubt and experience the atma anatma viveka the perfect discriminatory understanding of what is atma what is anatma the whole body is anatma the universe is anatma the surrounding environment is anatma all due to mula prakruti avidya the maya yoga shakti maya shakti vishnu maya shakti it has come during creation it has appeared and as long as i am not realized everything is real acharya last time i said in the brahma sutra ashya he makes it very clear in the concluding remarks in the fourth adhyaya till realization occurs everything is real 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 he calls it as vyavaharika satta it is real you sitting in front of me is real i sitting here is real you are different from me yes exactly i am different from you exactly we two are you know part of this duality yes yeah exactly till atma jnana sprouts in duality persists our guru used to always hint on this point your sadhana your meditation your journey in the spiritual life towards god always it starts with duality mode dvaita bhava i means i am this person i am doing the meditation i am doing the japa i am doing this nama sankirtana my guru is different he has told me i want to reach god i want to have bhagavad darshana so i am involved in my bhakti i am totally devoted to god my god is krishna i love krishna krishna is my god see all this is duality bo sadhana starts always in duality mode finally by the grace of the god when you become realized then you are stabilized in the perfect non dual advaita siddhi there is only one no double triple or any number multiples there is only one that is atma that is brahma padartha the atma is called parabrahma vastu 
that atma is called pratyagatma that atma is called self capital s yes. all these words so your purpose is to realize that acharya is for bandha muktaye vidusha atmanatma vivekah kartavya ವಿವೇಕದಿಂದ ವಿವೇಚನೆ ಮಾಡೋದ್ರಿಂದಲೇ ಆತ್ಮ ಮತ್ತು ಅನಾತ್ಮ ವಸ್ತುಗಳ ಪರಿಚಯ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಆಚರದೇ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಈ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಈ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಯು ನೋ ಹಿ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಎ ಥಿಕ್ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಗ್ರೋನ್ ಇನ್ ದೋಸ್ ಡೇಸ್ i have not seen that i have heard only the name maybe it, it may not be available now the god knows see there is a variety called in those days acharya uses the word munja munja grass m u n j a in english we can call it. munja grass is a variety thick variety the grass is not the grass you find on the lawns it is a thick variety of blades and the entire whorls outer over cover the inner whorl inner whorl will cover the again inner whorl like that there are number of layers of the blades blades covering one layer upon another layer upon another layer upon another layer just like the flower petals outer petals cover the inner petals inner petals cover again the inner layer of the petals like that the thick blades or in the circular fashion covering number of layers and in the center there is the stem portion totally invisible from outside the central stem portion of this thick grass variety called munja it is invisible slender very thin invisible almost that is the central stem portion of this plant it's called munja now acharya is giving the text see remember these examples are given almost 1200 years before so please bear that point in the mind please bear that munja dishi kami va drushya vargat pratyancha atmanam asangam akriyam ವಿವಿಚ್ಯ ತತ್ರ ಪ್ರವಿಲಾಪ್ಯ ಸರ್ವಂ ತದಾತ್ಮನ ತಿಷ್ಠತಿ ಯಸ್ಸ ಮುಕ್ತ ತದಾತ್ಮನ ತಿಷ್ಠತಿ ಯ ಸ ಮುಕ್ತ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ ಲೈನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಕೀವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ತದಾತ್ಮನ ತಿಷ್ಠತಿ ಯಸ್ಸ ಮುಕ್ತ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಯ ದ ಒನ್ ಯ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಆತ್ಮನ ತಿಷ್ಠತಿ ಸಹ ಮುಕ್ತ ದ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ಲಿ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷಸ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇನ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ ಆತ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪ ಇನ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ ರಿಯಾಲಿಟಿ ದ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ರಿಯಲೈಸಸ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಟ್ರೂ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಟಿ ಸಹ ಮುಕ್ತ ಸಚ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಮುಕ್ತ ಪುರುಷ ಸಚ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಮುಕ್ತ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ಡ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ Acharya uses the word mukta here he means jivan mukta he is liberated soul while still living in the body before death he has realized the true nature of himself so while still living in the body acharya calls such a noble soul such a wise man as mukta purusha jivan mukta totally liberated emancipated realized enlightened person so this is real enlightenment keyword in the last line munja dishi kami vadrushya vargat pratyancha atmanam asangam akriyam vivichya tatra pravilapya sarvam tad atmana tishthati yah samuktah ಮುಂಜವೆಂಬ ಹುಲ್ಲಿನ ಗಿಡದ ಹೊರಗಿನ ಪದರಗಳನ್ನ ಎಳೆಗಳನ್ನ ಎಲೆಗಳನ್ನ ನಿಧಾನವಾಗಿ ಬಿಡಿಸಿ ಮಧ್
ಕಂಡಿಗೆ ಕಣ್ಣಿಗೆ ಕಾಣದೆ ಇರತಕ್ಕಂತ ಸಣ್ಣ ದಂಟನ್ನ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಬೇರ್ಪಡಿಸಬಹುದು ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ವಿವಿಚ್ಯ ತತ್ರ ಪ್ರವಿಲಾಪ್ತಿ ಸರ್ವಂ ಕಣ್ಣಿಗೆ ಕಾಣುವ ಈ ದೃಶ್ಯ ಮಾಧ್ಯಮವ ಈ ಎಲ್ಲ ವಸ್ತುಗಳು ಎಲ್ಲವನ್ನ ಕಣ್ಣಿಗೆ ಕಾಣತಕ್ಕಂತ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಕ್ಕೆ ಗೋಚರವಾಗ ಎಲ್ಲ ವಸ್ತುಗಳನ್ನ ಬೇರ್ಪಡಿಸಿ ಇದು ಯಾವುದು ನಾನಲ್ಲ ನಾನಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಉಳಿತಕ್ಕಂಥ ವಸ್ತು ಆತ್ಮ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ನಾನೇ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಅಂತಹ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಗೆ ಆತ್ಮದರ್ಶನ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅವನು ಮುಕ್ತನಾಗ್ತಾನೆ ಸೊ ಇಯರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಟೆಂಡರ್ ಇನ್ವಿಸಿಬಲ್ ಇನ್ನರ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಕೋರ್ ಸಾಫ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟೆಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮುಂಜಾ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಲೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲೀವ್ಸ್ ಲೀಫ್ ಬ್ಲೇಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮುಂಜಾ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ Similarly, when you separate all the layers, the central stem is visible. So, if you separate all your sensory perceptions, whatever you observe, the whole world, the universe, the people, living and non-living things, everything if you observe one by one and think that they are not the real Atmans, separate them. Separate them in the sense that you remember that they are not the real atman so when you when you start negating everything this is not the atman the body no it is not the atman the next kit and kin standing in front of me my friend my enemy no they are not atman the river the mountain the park the forest are the atman no the sun the moon the stars are the atman no like that ultimately you have to negate everything by practice again please remember not by intellectual understand not by intellectual understanding nodding our head yes yes i understand i no not like that at all it is by habit by force it has to explode like the atom bomb of knowledge inside the mind inside the chittam inside the buddhi so when you separate everything discard everything what remains what remains is a pure atma so once you establish in your atma swarupa you are liberated you become liberated you are called a liberated soul you are called a jivan mukta you are called a mukta purusha that's what acharya says this is now this is the introduction he is giving for now the detailed analysis of the five koshas now he comes to the five kosha pancha kosha as i said earlier ultimately he explains one by one and negates that they are they are nothing to do with atma nothing to do with the self nothing to do with the inner ishvara who resides inside paramatma who resides in us all the outer five koshas are to be discarded one by one we have to understand correctly that's how acharya now takes us into the again depths of the five kosha pancha kosha now he starts with annamaya kosha next shlokas verse number 154 onwards deal with annamaya kosha outermost layer what is the annamaya kosha repeatedly repeatedly we have to remember otherwise we forget annamaya kosha is another name in vedanta given to the physical body visible the body visible to our eyes the physical body of the individual i am sitting in front of you you are looking at me you think that i am so and so so and so is giving a lecture or a discourse on viveka chuda mani so i am visible to you so this gross body this physical body is called annamaya kosha anna in vedanta means basically food it can be any form liquid or solid the food is called anna not just the cooked rice we also call cooked rice what we eat anna in india but in vedanta anna means the food 
that is a matter that the food required for the growth of the body physical body sustaining the body sustaining the activities of the body sustaining the life of the body because without the food what happens body withers physical body becomes weak energy is lost ultimately it becomes bedridden ultimately it will die so the energy for the body activity all the cells for their activity energy is required that energy comes from the food called anna anna so in vedanta anna means food please remember so annamaya kosha means physical body now the next shlokas in detail acharya deals with this annamaya kosha he explains about the physical body and every time he says this is not the atman please remember your body is not your self this is physical body you identify with that ala it is not so ultimately he negates one by one deho yaman bhavano annamayastu kosha अन्नान्न जीवति विनश्यति तद्विहीन त्वर्म मंसुरास्ति पुरीशराशी न अय स्वयं भवतुमर्हति निशुद्धमो अन्नमयस्त कोश अन्न जीवति विनश्यति तद्विहीन स्वयं न अयम स्वयं भवतु मर्हति निशुद्ध बहुत अर्थ एलू आगुंत देह अ हुटे अीवस्ता है अन्न इलाद्रे देह बिंदे नाशवे अन्न देह के मृत्यु बरते देह अंदर ऐन वरगन चर्म मूले मंसू रक्त स्नायु मज्जे मूत्रकोशद्लींत मूत्र मल सो मलमूत्र रक्त मूले मंस चर्म देह सो एक्सप्लेनिंग about the physical body so this body he says this gross body is produced because of the anna food matter energy supplies energy supply so this body is sustained by the food it is produced by the food sustained by the food and ultimately when the food is withheld when the food is not given the body will die so without food the body will die and this body is what this physical body is what composed of skin bones connective tissue fat blood blood vessels organs then excreta in the form of fecal matter being produced regularly in our small and large intestine urine being produced from our kidney and stored in our own urinary bladder inside our body so we are uh, is sort of a baggage you know our uh, lower part the torso the stomach and the lower uh, region of the body it is nothing but a baggage of it is a baggage of urine and fecal matter acharya says this. see we are a walking baggage of urine and fecal matter and plus sweat from entire the pores of the skin of the body all the time when the heat is too much sweat comes out maybe in the northern hemisphere people may are not used to the sweating sweat doesn't come there because of the cold temperature you come to the tropical countries come to the countries with higher temperature in the summer season you find sweat so your whole body produces sweat and constantly you produce urine 
a matter to be thrown out. Constantly you produce fecal matter, undigested food to be thrown out. So when we look at the fecal matter on the road, when you look at the person urinating on the road, we feel highly odd, agitated, as if something unimaginable. A sort of revulsion, you know, in the mind, when you look at the urine, when you look at the fecal matter, total aversion, revulsion. You turn your face this way and walk. But Acharya is hinting that point here. What he says, your body is a baggage you are, you feel highly agitated when you see the urine on the road, fecal matter on the road, but you forget that you, you inside you are carrying the same fecal matter 24 bar 7 days. You are carrying the same urine being produced, stored, produced, stored in your urinary bladder 24 bar 7. Nobody thinks on that. You do all the makeup for the body, apply all beautiful lotions to the body, wear colorful dresses over the body, and we try to present ourselves as a most beautiful person, most beautiful man or woman with all necessary paraphernalia in the life. Especially imagine. Surely we have to laugh at one point. Observe the fashion shows, most famous in Paris and other American and European and American cities. The fashion show, observe yourself. We are presenting our fully dressed up body. Acharya says, this body is full of purishaha, fecal matter, excrete. So this is not Atma, ultimately he calls that one. This body is born, sustained, and it will die because of the availability or absence of food, ultimately. Then he continues that. Very interesting. Purvam janerapi mruthe ratana yamasti jatak shanak shanaguno ani shanaguno niyata swabhavaha naiko jadascha gadavat paridrushyamanaha Swatma katham bhavati bhava vikara vetta. Key word here he has used. Bhava vikara vetta swatma katham bhavati. Last line key word. Bhava vikara vetta means the knower, that is Atma, Paramatma, Pratyagatma, Ishvara, Self. Sadguru, everything means. The one who is a ruler, the one who is a knower of things. Bhava Vikara Vetta. Keyword. Purvam Janerapi Mrute Rathana Yamasti Jatakshana Kshana Guno Niyatasvabhavaha Naiko Jadascha Gadavat Paridrushyamanaha Swatma Katham Bhavati Bhava Vikara Vetta. Purvam jana api brute atha na ayam asti means this body, look my dear disciple, this body, your body or my body, whichever you take, look at the body, human body. It was not there before birth. Were you there before birth? You were born in the mother's womb for nine months, you developed there. Before that, your body was not there. And after death also, it is not there. It is thrown out. It is burnt away. Or it is cremated or completely buried. And it vanishes. So your body is neither present before the birth nor after death. Only in between birth and death, the body is present. Puttu o madalu i deha illa. Puttu savina nantru i deha illa. Maddi davastil matra kanta i deha illa. And this body, Jatakshana Kshana Guno, Aniyata Svavaha, Aniyata Svavaha. This body is constantly changing 
after birth till death there is constant change transformation in the body it is not permanent it won't remain in the same shape same type it it is impermanent constantly it is every moment it changes so idu jadavat ghatavat paridrushyamana acharya compares the body to a pot ardan pot ghata so the pot is visible pot is there just like that what is visible the body is also visible the pot is a jada inert he says yes like that please remember the body is also inert body is a jada means basically inert what does that mean ee deha nodappa ee sharira nijavaglu jada acharya helta idu jada andre yenu madak barolla adu but the body does all the functions we say see you walk and you sleep and you talk and you run and do all work and you think how can it be jada see this is all the actions of the body due to the atma inside because of the presence of the pure consciousness in its presence the body is working because of the presence the body is working otherwise when the atma leaves the body body dies as you call so jada like a pot so acharya is giving that example <clears throat> like a pot it is it is a jada next he compa- gives another example pani padadi man deho natma vyengepi jivanat tat tat chakte anashascha na niyamyo niyamakah another example he gives pani padadi man deho natma vyengepi jivanat tat tat chakte anashascha na niyamyo niyamakah he says see if your body were to be really atman if the body parts are cut that means atman is also cut correct if the body is atman dehave ee sharirave atma agidre ee sharirada angagalu chidravadare adru manusha jeevanta irthanalla irbardagittu kai kattarisidre kaal kattarisidru antha jana jeevantavagiddare see there are examples where the legs are cut due to accident due to war hands are cut arms are cut due to war or accident but still such people live without hand or feet if the body were to be atma if the hand is cut uh, the, the body has to die isn't it so that a sort of a corollary example analogous example is given that is why body cannot be atma because the body is conditioned by atma but atma is not conditioned by the body body is ruled by atma atma is a ruler of the body big boss the body physical body is under the control of atma atma is not in the control of the body so atma cannot be the body that is physical body that is atma ultimately cannot be annamaya kosha see that is how he is deriving it explaining annamaya kosha in detail and at every step ili acharya en helta iddare ee sthula sharira annadinda utpattiyagi annadinda beladu konege anna villade prana gatavagodrinda ಇದು ಅನ್ನಮಯ ಕೋಶ ಔಟರ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಲೇಯರ್ ಇದು ಆತ್ಮವಲ್ಲ ದಿಸ್ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಆತ್ಮ ದಿಸ್ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ದಿಸ್ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಪ್ರತ್ಯೇಕಾತ್ಮ ಆತ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಜಡ ಇಟ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಡೈ ಒನ್ ಡೇ ಇನ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಹಸ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಇಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ವೇರ್ what is that point that which is born whatever is born means whatever is created is not permanent not atma swarup whatever is created one day it has to go one day it has to vanish 
everyone agrees with that even scientists will agree with it, modern science the universe is created it has a life span maybe billions of years we don't know earth is created it has its own life span sun illuminating sun in our solar system a big star it has its own life span the saturn planet it has its own life span the living creatures in the planet earth living they have their own life spans non living things in our planet called earth they have their own life spans rock or a mountain or a river or a big tree they have their own life ultimately 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 they will vanish they will die means they will vanish so vedanta is very clear what is the point whatever which is born or created has to go one day whereas the atma brahma padartha para brahma vastu paramatma ishvara pratyagatma self pure consciousness the pure awareness it is nothing but chit swarupa pure knowledge existence sat swarupa pure existence chit swarupa pure knowledge jnana sat ananda swarupa pure bliss so this atma is nothing but eternally present existence knowledge and bliss english words they don't come near the sanskritam language this atma is called in sanskritam sachidananda swarupa this atma is eternally called sat swarupa chit swarupa ananda swarupa it is permanently there there is no change it is neither born nor it will die nor it will change it is imperishable it remains eternal in the same way as it is no transformation no change that is ishwar paramatma whatever name we give there is only one ekam eva advitiya so that is permanent that is imperishable imperishable it has no beginning it has no end neither it has birth nor death it is aja amara asanga nishkriya nishkala niranjana nirvikalpa nirvishesha these are adjectives in upanishads used to explain what cannot be explained so with guru sankalpa today we are stopping here and with a short rama bhajan <clears throat> sri rama jay rama jay jay rama 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 hari om namo bhagavate viraajeshwaraya